So the Z Fold 4 is an amazing phone. I've been using it for like the past week or so, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's super fast, it's a productivity monster, the battery life is great, it looks amazing, blah, 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 blah. You'll hear all of that in the countless reviews that are coming out for this phone, myself included, once I've spent a little bit more time with it. But that's not what I wanted to focus on today. You see, last week I opened up a box full of old, mostly non-working phones, but there were a few gems in there, like this Microsoft Lumia 640. Now I managed to get the phone working for a brief period of time, but since then the charging port just gave out on me altogether and I haven't been able to get it to come back on. Then I had a thought, an idea so dumb that I had to try and make it work. Enter the Windows Z Fold 4. This is a fully functioning, somewhat modern rendition of what the Windows phone might have looked like had it not, you know, crashed and burned a while back. The outer screen is reminiscent of Metro UI with these blocky squares in a grid-like pattern. Naturally, I had to keep the old icon for the messaging app and I've gone through the trouble of changing the browser icon to look like Microsoft Edge, even though it's linked to the far superior Google Chrome. The true magic, however, comes from the inner screen. Just tap on the little Windows icon down here, unfold the phone, and boom, Windows Desktop. The inner screen functions very much like an actual Windows PC environment. The start button down here is where you can access all of the apps on your device. Just tap and hold on any of the apps here and then you can add it to either the desktop or pin it to your taskbar. Also down in the taskbar, you'll find a search menu for finding apps faster, a working clock and calendar widget, a collapsible quick settings shortcut, and a full settings and notifications panel that will show all of your notifications instead of having them up in the swipe down menu. Everything in here works better than I expected. You can change the volume of your notifications and ringtones, change your screen brightness and turn off the adaptive brightness function, see how much memory your system is using and how much storage space you have left. And if you need to change your Bluetooth devices, tapping on the Bluetooth button will take you right to the Bluetooth page in your device's default settings app. You also have a file browser in here via the This PC button where you can access all of your file folders, again, like a Windows PC. But this is obviously not a Windows PC. PC. It's still running Android. This is just a very fancy launcher that runs on top of Android. In fact, there's actually two launchers working in tandem here, one for the outer display and then one for the inner display. The launcher for the outer display is called Square Home. It's a Metro UI inspired launcher that allows you to create square and rectangular tiles in a very similar way to how Windows Phone 8.1 used to work. You can drag around and resize the tiles however you'd like. And this launcher is actually surprisingly feature rich when it comes to adding custom gestures and designs. For example, instead of having the camera app as a button on my home screen, I added a gesture that allows me to swipe left to open the camera app. It's still a bit of a design conundrum to have Windows 8.1 on the front screen, only to have it open up to a much newer looking Windows 10 desktop OS on the inside, but I think that's all a part of the chaotic fun that this process is. And make no mistake, it is a process. To get that second launcher for the inner screen working seamlessly, it actually required quite a bit of messing around and I'll tell you exactly how I did that right after I thank the sponsor of this video Soundcore. This is the Soundcore Q45, a brand new pair of noise canceling headphones with industry leading battery life and 40 millimeter drivers for detail rich sound. These headphones have a battery life of 50 hours with the noise cancellation turned on and 65 hours with it turned off, which is twice as long as the average competing headphones in the industry. Not only that, but if you plug them in with the USB-C cable for just five minutes, you'll get four full hours of playtime. With the touch of a button on this side, you can activate the adaptive three-stage noise cancellation system that will block up to 98% of noise around you. The system will automatically switch between noise cancellation modes to try and best cancel out noise, whether you're indoors, outdoors, or even on a flight. The Space Q45 has a premium all-new design with aluminum hinges and ultra-soft padded ear cups for comfort, and best of all, it's extremely affordable at just 150 US dollars. Pick up your Soundcore Space Q45 via the link in the description below. So like I said, to get this working at least somewhat seamlessly, you need two launchers. One for the outer screen, which is called the Square Home Launcher, and one for the inner screen, which is called WinX Launcher. Getting the first launcher working is easy. All you gotta do is set WinX to be your system's default home app. The second one's a bit more difficult, and it requires a routine to be set up 
that tells the device to open the second launcher when the device closes up. This is done with an app called Bixby Routines. There's a lot of cool if this then that type stuff that you can do with this app, but the action that we're looking to perform is to open an app when the device is folded completely shut. I'm not gonna go super in depth on how exactly I did this because there's a few fantastic tutorials on how to do that out there already. But the idea is pretty simple. You make one routine that brings you back home when the device is unfolded, and you make a second routine that opens the Square Home Launcher app when the device is folded shut. This method of using two different launchers isn't nearly as janky and buggy as I was expecting, but it obviously isn't anywhere near perfect either. Occasionally the routine won't kick in fast enough, and I'll see the animation from where the inner launcher transitions into the outer launcher, and vice versa. Going home from an app while using the outer screen will also take you back to that Windows Home Launcher since that is the default home that I set. That's not that big of a deal, by the way. You could easily just use the phone with that WinX launcher and be perfectly fine. You could just populate the outer desktop full of apps. So that's just not really the way I wanted to do it personally because I really like Metro UI. Alternatively, you could just do what I did and pin the square home launcher to the taskbar. So if you get out of an app and you want to get back to that outer screen, you just tap on that and away you go. Either way, weird bugs or not, for a MacGyvered Windows phone OS on a modern day folding phone? I'm pretty impressed. And I think Android deserves a ton of credit for being such a flexible operating system that you can do dumb things like this with every now and again. On a more serious note, this Samsung Z Fold 4 is a monster of a phone. I'm going on a short trip with it soon to pick up our new golden retriever puppy. And I'm definitely gonna be taking just a ridiculous amount of pictures of him using this phone. So stay tuned for that. I'll be posting them all over my Twitter, I'm sure. So go follow me, links in the description down below. Anyway, that's it for this rather dumb video. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.